the lesson that we're doing today is pretty much just reinforcing what we learned on Monday when we studied um, when we studied the angle measurements. <clears throat> and we talked about how the biggest angle measurement is going to be across from the longest length. So yesterday's dashboard assignment was all about the angle measurements. And this one is going to be how the angle measurements and the size are related. And you already know that. So it's just nice to practice. But I'm going to talk about a few things that you're going to see maybe in your dashboard assignments that um, you don't understand. Maybe they weren't in the practice problems. And um, you might have to go back to 15.2 and look at some of those questions after you learn today's lesson, too. So today you're going to be doing 15.3 on the dashboard. And then you can go back and look at 15.2, do any of those problems that you need to do. And of course, on the board are your assignments for this fifth, for the fifth six weeks. I took off um, the third one, which was 14.3. I forgot that we didn't do that. Okay, so because it's St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to change my color to green. <clears throat> but I want you to look at the Cornell notes that I have started for you. You need to put the date here. Remember, I'm going to be asking to look at these notes. Tuesday, 3 17 16. You're going to want all of this very clear and easy for me to see. If not, you're going to get a zero. And then the title 15.3 Relationships Between Sides and Angles of a Triangle. So, one of the first things that you need to understand is that the way they name an angle. They name naming. So, um, of course, these notes that I'm writing here, I want you to write on your paper, naming an angle. And then <clears throat> the little symbol that I have at the beginning, those are angle symbols. Sometimes they look like less than signs. So what teachers will do sometimes is draw this little arc through the vertex of the angle like that just to show you that, okay, I don't have the best handwriting, so I'm going to put this here so that you know that is an angle symbol. So usually, and that's usually how I draw mine, but look over here on, like, mm, B. Right here, M, and then that symbol, and then A. You read that, yes, you write this down in your notes. Measure of angle A. That's how you would read that. Okay? <clears throat> now, um, back to up here on the, when, when you name an angle, you look at what is in the middle. So, <clears throat> if I'm talking about this triangle right here, and I want to only talk about angle B. I could call it angle B or I can call it angle A, B, C. Notice what's in the center, the one I'm talking about. A is on the outside and C is on the outside, but B is in the middle. So that one is the angle I'm talking about. Sometimes you will see angle percent, good grief. That should be a degree sign. Sometimes you'll have um, a shape that has lots of triangles in it, and B might be part of more than one angle or more than one triangle or sh shape or something. So this is going to help you just look at what's in the middle. B is in the middle, so we're talking about angle B. Um, angle A, C, B is going to be angle C, because C is in the middle. A, C, B. And then angle C, A, B, what's in the middle? A, that's the one they're talking about, A. So they're talking about C, A, B. Okay. 
um, you can move on past these notes to continue the next ones and I'm going to delete. If you look on the board, I left this up there. Um, <clears throat> I didn't realize that this vocabulary is coming up already. So the very first vocabulary word that you're going to need to remember is complementary angles. Yes, write this down. Complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles Two angles that add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so that's some vocabulary that you need to know. All right, let's go on to the Oh, I don't know how to do this. All right, let's go on to this. Um, I'm going to delete all this. Hope you got it. Okay, so example one says triangle ABC. So you use all three letters to name it has side lengths of seven centimeters, nine centimeters, and four and a half centimeters. Use the relationship between the sides and angles of a triangle to match each side with its correct length. So angle B is 100 degrees. That is the biggest angle. So across from it is going to be the longest length, which is seven, nine, or four and a half. Which one? It'll be nine centimeters. The smallest one is 30 degrees, so it will go with the shortest length. That one is four and a half centimeters. And then the one left over is your middle, and that is seven centimeters. Okay? Now we're going backwards on B. B says triangle ABC has angles measuring 60 degrees, 80 degrees, and 40 degrees. Use the relationship between the sides and angles of a triangle to match each angle with its correct measure. Well, let's do the same thing we did before. Find the longest length that's going to be across from the biggest angle. The longest length is 20 um, units. I don't know what it is. Across from it is going to be the biggest angle measurement. Is that 60, 80, or 40? That's going to be 80. The smallest side is 13, so it's going to have the smallest angle measurement, which is 40. And then the one in the middle is 60. Okay. Um, let's see, I think maybe we can skip a lot of this practice. Triangle ABC has side lengths of 11, 16, and 19. Match each side with its correct length. When they label a side, they label the end points. A and B means from A to B. So that's this side right here. Okay? So let's start with um, the biggest angle. The biggest angle is 88 degrees. The biggest side length here is 19. The smallest is 35. So that means the smallest length is going to be 11. That's the smallest length here. And then 57 is the one in the middle. It takes the length in the middle, which is 16. So let's write these answers down. AB is 16. 
AC is 19 and BC is 11. Here we are going backwards for number two. Here's the longest length. <clears throat> it is across from the biggest angle, which is 77. And then the smallest length is 5, so it goes across from the smallest angle, 45. And then what's left over is the one in the middle, 58. So let's label these. Measure of angle A is 45. Measure of angle B is 58. Measure of angle C is 77. Of course, these are all degrees. Let's look at this problem for number three. A fence around a rock garden is <clears throat> in the shape of a right triangle. So that means that one of the angles is going to have a right angle. And then you just connect the other two. And that you know right away that one is 90. A lot of times we draw a little square here in, to show that that's a right angle. I did not make that very pretty, did I? Okay, which is 90 degrees. And then it says two angles measure 30 and 60. So I'm going to make this one, I guess, 30, this one's 60. And then it says two sides measure 10 feet and 17 feet. No, oh, 17.3 feet. And it says the total length of the fence is 47.3. We don't know what that is. But when you add them together, you get 47.3. How long is the opposite side of the right angle? Okay, so um, let's find what this is. What do we have so far? To see how close we get to 47 and 3 tenths. Let's add what we have so far. 10 plus 17.3 is 27.3. Now let's subtract it from the total. Twenty, okay? So that's 20. So let's go ahead and label these. The longest, the biggest angle measurement is 90. So across from it is the longest length, which was 20. And that's what it's asking for. How long is the side opposite the right angle? It's 20. All right, let's see if there's anything else you need to know here. Maybe the vocabulary for this. Equilateral triangle. Write this down. Equilateral triangle is when all three sides are the same length and all three corners, all three angles are equal to each other. So if they all add up to 180, 180 divided by 3 is 60. So they're 60, 60, 60. Okay, the links could be anything, as long as they're all three the same. Okay, so now you're going to do 15.3 on, um, 15.3 on your dashboard. Once you're done with 15.3, you want to do it now while it's fresh on your mind. And then once you're done with 15.3, you can go back and you have time to do other um, assignments from the 14s or the 15s. That's what's going to be on your progress report. So get those done first.